hated to see myself as glasses always, you know. And uh, so I remember the first time uh, the uh, contacts were inserted, the doctor took me by the hand and led me in front of a big mural in the hallway. He said, now you can see yourself without glasses. I said, I look like a bullfrog. <laughs> that was my response, you know. Because the eyes were so irritated. And now I don't I don't see any faces or anything, you know. It's just in my old age it has just gotten severely worse. I was in my mid twenties. And I was them for 20 years, and uh, but I was uh, told from the beginning that they would come, that my eyes would not tolerate the contacts anymore because they were thick, even when the soft lenses came out, they were like almost like hard lenses because of the severe power that they needed, and so they were, you know, they had to be thicker, mm -hmm. and the day came almost exactly uh, 20 years later. Mm -hmm. I was married twice and my first husband was George Pickerheinen, but um, we were married on television a week after I was in this country, unbeknown to me. But that's another story, yeah. I really don't want to get that story <laughs> okay. in there. But uh, the father of my children is Alan Kirschbaum and he is still alive. Oh, and does he live here as well? No, he lives in uh, San Clemente. San Clemente? Yeah, okay. and he was a life companion that uh, uh, he had when we divorced in 1982. Mm. And I have long forgiven him his compulsive gambling or anything like that. Mm. And life is too short. Mm -hmm. And the lady that he is with, we are very good friends. Okay, that's nice. She's to very artistic, and we somehow clicked when we met the first time. And how many children do you have? Two. And grandchildren? One. One. How old's your grandchild? Twelve. Going on thirty-five. <laughs> And um, what, kind, what, if any, kind of work did you do when you were younger? Uh, here at uh, the um, Artist Colony? You no, know, before you came to the Artist Colony. Oh, before I did came Did you to, have a career uh, in art? My career was uh, because of, you know, I couldn't ever drive. Sure. And um, it kind of just fell in my lap when my first husband was still going to school. Um, we lived in... Uh, in fact, when I came to this country, I started out in Glendale. Mm -hmm. I've come full circle. <laughs> it's really strange. But uh, then he wanted to move to the Bay Area, uh, to San Jose, and go to, at the time it was called San Jose State uh, College, you know. And, um, but I wanted to work and save for a trip back to Germany. and. Uh, when you want something with, that has to do with art, even then it was very difficult. So uh, one day he drove me to, all the way to Palo Alto and uh, I've, you know, in those days you always got a job through the state employment agency and uh, the fellow said, well with art, could you work in an art store? Oh sure, anything, you know. And he gave me this card and he said, go to university, to the University Art Center on Hamilton Avenue and ask for Laurie. And I walked in there, this real neat lady of Italian heritage met me and we clicked right away and three days later I started working there. It was an art supply store. and. Uh, we have been friends ever since. She's now 83, still as sharp as can be, a business head on her uh, head, and uh, uh, it's just has been great. And then, about three years later, my husband then decided 
He graduated as a teacher and he decided to take a position at a high school in Anchorage, Alaska. So I was always adventuresome and we went to Alaska. And uh, but I always stayed in touch with this uh, owner of the store, Ollie. And uh, whenever I came to, to visit, I stayed with her and so forth. But 20 years later, when my life changed and I wanted to move back to California with my two children, uh, I called Laurie, coming back to her. Oh, you have to come and work for us. Oh no, I don't want to raise the kids in San Francisco. I want to be further out. Um, she wanted me to come to Palo Alto. I didn't want to go to Palo Alto. I wanted to be in the Walnut Creek area. And she said, well, we're opening a store in, in San Francisco here in less than a month. You have to come and work for us here. Well, how do I get to San Francisco from Walnut Creek? I mean, I had no clue. I didn't know about Bart. I mean, you heard it on TV, um, but it was also foreign. I've lived in Alaska, you know, all those years. So one day I started out and it took me forever to figure out how you get a bar ticket. And then I came up at street level at the Embarcadero and as a hot dog vendor, uh, where's Battery Street? Well, too bad. where do you want to go on Battery? 1035. Well, you turn right and you keep walking and walking and walking. As well. And you're doing all this with a stick? Yeah. Wow. And I wore little heels. But at that time, my vision was better than it is today, but I was still considered legally blind. I couldn't see any signs or anything, any street signs, and I always had to ask, you know. And I said, I'm never going to do that. Well, 23 years later, I had done it every day, you know. And, oh, it was fantastic. I felt kind of straight. Oh, in Alaska, it's the same thing. I got into an art store. That's all I've done all my life. And on, on a much smaller scale in Anchorage. <coughs> but in San Francisco, I mean, we had a gift department. I became the buyer. And we had a frame department. I was loved the frame, custom framing. I built up an art book department. Uh, uh, the You're right. I, that would be surprising to find out that you're legally blind when yeah. you've worked for decades in an art supply store. Yeah, so, uh, and I learned a lot. You know, I met many interesting people and uh, um, it, it was great. I enjoyed it. Never made a tremendous amount of money, but I was very, very happy. And what is the trait that you most admire in yourself? Uh, that I admire that I have a positive attitude. I don't let things get me down too easily. Giselle, what was your childhood like growing up in Germany? My art childhood was actually quite nice. I have good memories, even though from the age seven there was the Second World War. It started two weeks before my seventh birthday. But as a child, you don't really understand it. Except gradually, you know, we were lived out in the country, even though it was so close to Berlin, was northwest of Berlin. Um, still, it was country. And my father had, uh, we had a, a flower, uh, flower farm or whatever you call it here, nursery, but we also had more land. For my father it was, he didn't like the small, he, because he had been in this country before for three and a half years, so he knew what big farms could be like. So he cultivated some land uh, about 10 miles from where we lived. And, oh, as children, I mean, it was just great. My girlfriends and I could take our little doll buggies, you know, at age five and walk to nearby woods and uh, play in the sun on a little knoll. I can envision it right now. And uh, you didn't have to be scared of anything. And it was just great. But then when the war started, uh, it changed, you know. Uh, 
there wasn't any fighting going on in that part of Germany at that time. But uh, the air raids began and that wasn't too much fun. You know. In fact, I wrote a book for my a small book, you know, just 50 or 60 pages for my grandson. He asked me once, what were your experiences during the Second World War? And I was kind of taken aback. I said, um, well, um, I remember the air raids. And he looked at her, what's an air raid? You know, and he wandered off and he didn't want to know anymore. <laughs> so, but, um, yeah, the, uh, in fact, in our area, because the planes came from England and the always came, you know, northwest of Berlin, that's the way they flew in, to land over Berlin. And uh, they took fields and plowed rows and put charcoal in there and it was lit every night when it got dark so the planes should think that that's Berlin drop the bombs there because it's more a lot of country you know even though people live there and of course the planes were the pilots were stupid they flew right over it and or they did all sorts of things so, uh, like uh, shooting up little uh, pair, small parachutes with something hanging on it that was lit and so I, this was also supposed to deter the uh, uh, pilots of course it never happened you know, they dropped very few bombs around our area and the artillery was just maybe a half a mile from our house that was supposed to shoot down the planes and it didn't shoot down very many you know Please to travel yes that you've ever been in oh your give life. me a ticket i go anywhere <laughs> I I have been in a lot of places. I've lived in Sweden. I hitchhiked also Sweden when I was very young and also Scandinavia into Lapland and Finnish Lapland. And uh, What's your favorite holiday? Christmas. And your favorite book? I like um, for fiction, I like Jodi Picot. I like all her writings. You know, The Tenth Circle. And I have had, I think, 12 of her books now that I have listened to. So, Giselle, when and where were you the happiest? Uh, I was very happy when my children were small. Uh, that's a special time. And when my daughter got married, um, and when I'm with my children, basically. But in general, I have always been happy, you know. Uh, there's a little downtime at times, life doesn't, isn't always so even. But in general, I consider myself a happy person. And what activities at the Burbank Senior Arts Colony do you most enjoy? I enjoy that there is a lot, um, I can't really say it, camaraderie, but there's always social interaction. If you walk down a hallway from your apartment to go to the elevator, you meet at least three people. And unfortunately, I don't recognize them, but uh, people seem to know me by now. And, uh, and I like what is offered here. The uh, activities, um, especially the physical activities, yoga and anti-aging exercises, and, uh, and also that there's a, like later on today, there's a social hour here, and um, that there are two big art studios here that I can come and when I want to, when there's nothing going on in the studio, uh, I can do my thing, and that's what I enjoy. Can you share any stories about the things you've created or done during your time here? Well, I have... Uh, I didn't bring that because it's just 
more artwork right now. I like to, uh, for the last few years, I've painted this on a fairly new paper that came out about 10 years ago. It's called Yupo paper, Y-U-P-O. And it is similar to children's finger paint paper. It has a slick surface, but it's not only paper, it has a polyurethane surface on it. So your watercolor or whatever you're using as a uh, color doesn't penetrate into the paper. So it stays on top. And if you do something wild and you don't like it, take it over to the sink, rinse it off, and you have a, a clean piece of paper. And uh, I discovered I had some acrylic uh, artist inks that were given to me at one point and I didn't know what to do with them. And I said, well, I'm going to try that. And it worked absolutely fabulous. And I did many, many things. I sold most of them. And, well, I don't, I, this is one of them that was done this way. And this is also with, with the ink. And uh, two of the paintings that I submitted to the show last year were done. Uh, this, I think, was one of them that I. No, this one was one of them. And. Uh, but uh, I can no longer get these inks, and uh, so I have to find something else. And then I painted on silk a lot, and I bought some silk. I gave most of the, my tools and supplies away, unfortunately. And. Uh, I painted silk scarves that I sold and I still have some scarves but uh, that are painted but uh, I didn't bring the big frames. I didn't think there would be any room here. Little did I know I could have stored them here at the artist colony in the studio, you know. So, but I do have some silk and I can use some stretcher bars. I do want to, yeah, and what I painted on silk is... There was, I thought, this is, for instance, one that's painted on silk. It does such fun things that you can do by adding a little water on other color. And Oh, this uh, award-winning piece on the catalog is painted on silk. And I called the Lighthouse of the Blind in San Francisco. I didn't know anything about it. No, we don't have anything to do with it. And I said, well, I'm going to Google it. I Googled uh, exhibition for blind and visually impaired people. No match. Couldn't find anything. Meantime, I had been at UC Berkeley where my eye doctor sent me to. And there was a uh, social worker or whatever she was. She always asked questions if she could help in some way. And she, uh, I called her she must know. And she said, no, I never heard of it, but I will find out for you. A couple of days later, she called me. She said, I'm sending you um, an email with all the information. The only problem is the deadline is in less than a month from now. That was a year ago in May. And so I got busy and selected four pieces and uh, I needed a CD. You only submit the digital images to begin with, you know, then they can select if they want them or not. And uh, I had a neighbor across the street that was very, always very helpful and she had a little better uh, digital camera than I had and she uh, took the pictures and uh, burnt me a CD and in the 11th hour we got them off via FedEx and uh, and then it said oh, they would send out the notices about three weeks they had five jurors and uh, so my kids called have you heard anything no it's still going to be another couple of weeks till I hear. And then one Saturday I get my mail only two weeks into it. And, you know, I was looked 
carefully I could make out the return address. Marshall B. Ketchum University, Fullerton. Oh my gosh, I ran in and slipped the envelope. It was a big 8.5 by 11 envelope. It wasn't just a little folded one. And uh, I ran in and opened it. I didn't even get my fancy magnifier out. I could see Congratulations. Oh my gosh, then I got the magnifier. I nearly fell over that I got the signature award. So I called the neighbor across the street that uh, helped me so much in filling out the papers and everything. And she said, oh, I wish I had some champagne. I would bring it over. We celebrate. I said, forget the champagne. I have a bottle of wine in the refrigerator. <laughs> we celebrate. You know, and that was it. And I just, it was really, uh, I really felt just fantastic, you know. As I say, I think I flew up to the ceiling and stayed up there for at least two weeks. So that's the story of my award. And then I called, it was Saturday afternoon, Monday morning, I called the university and talked to the director. She said, oh, I knew you would call me, Giselle. Oh, you it's only the first year that you're with us, and um, you don't know what it entails to get the signature award. Your picture will be on the cover of the catalog and on different things. And uh, We put out a, a calendar that we give out to our big donors, and uh, uh, your picture will be on that. So then I didn't get a catalog, uh, a calendar. So I called, you know, have you put, oh, we just got the calendars, we sent you a couple. But that year they didn't put any pictures on the, it was just a striped color cover. So, but, uh, yeah, that was really exciting, you know. If you could step into a time machine, where would you go and why? If I could step into a time machine and go anywhere, I would like to go to Mars it's, and explore everything new. To me, that would be exciting. Well, thank you so much for spending time with us today. We're going to take some pictures of your art and um, let you go and enjoy the rest of your day. I really appreciate your um, sharing with us.